Welcome to 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the New York Jets at the New York Giants in their Week 13 matchup played December 6, 2015. We're going to go over every possession and the stats and give our breakdown and analysis. So in this game, it was technically a home game for the Giants, but really both of these teams were at home. But to start this game off, the Jets went 3-0 and out on their first possession. The Giants would also go 3-0 and out on their first possession as well. So now the Jets would take over with about 12.5 minutes left in the first quarter. And they would go on a lengthy 6.5 minute drive going 78 yards in 11 plays. But their drive stalled on the Giants 6 yard line as they were right there on the verge of scoring, but they couldn't get it into the end zone, and so they would settle for a 24-yard field goal by Randy Bullock as the Jets went up 3-0. So the Jets put the first points on the scoreboard, and the Giants would then punt on their next possession after five plays. So now the Jets would take over on their own seven, backed up against their own end zone, and they would end up having to punt. Of course, they brought the first quarter to a close, and on the first play of the second quarter, is when they would punt the ball from their own 25 as uh, Fitzpatrick had been sacked on the last play of the first quarter by Jenkins. But so the punt to open up the first, and it was returned 80 yards by Dwayne Harris. So the touchdown for the Giants on the special team play, and Brown would kick the extra point, and now the G-Men were in the lead 7-3. And that was just moments into the second quarter. So the Jets would be held to a three and out on their next possession. The Giants would punt after four plays on the possession after that. And so now the Jets would take over on their own 18. And on first down, Chris Ivory fumbles. It was recovered by JPP. And so now the Giants would take over on the Jets' 10-yard line. So right there in the red zone to start their possession... They got all the way down to the one, but they could not get it into the end zone. So they would have to settle for a 20-yard field goal by Josh Brown with about nine minutes left before halftime. And it was now 10-3 to as the Giants extended their lead to seven. Well, the Jets would respond with a scoring drive of their own, going 79 yards and nine plays in about five and a half minutes. Starting off on their own 21, they had a big play from Brandon Marshall with a 22-yard catch, and they had a 15-yard reception, and that brought them into Giants territory. And then, after getting to the edge of the red zone and losing some yards, they were faced with a third and 15 from the 25, and Ryan Fitzpatrick hit Bilal Powell for a 25-yard touchdown. Bullock added the extra point, and this game was tied at 10 apiece with under three and a half left before halftime. So now the Giants would come right back with a quick scoring drive, just over a minute, going 80 yards in just three plays, because on third and two from their own 28, Eli Manning, he hit Odell Beckham in stride, coming across the middle on a slant, and Odell Beckham took off for the races, 72 yards for the touchdown. And now with the extra point by Brown, the Giants were back in the lead by seven with the score 17 to 10, New York over New York. So that was just over two minutes left in this game. The Jets would go three and out and bring this game to the two minute warning before punting. And they would end up punting the ball to the Giants, who now took over on their own 33 with less than two minutes left to play in the first half. And they would end up with a big play from Eli Manning to tie for a 45-yard reception on 2nd and 13 from the 30 that brought the ball to the Jets' 25. And they would end up having a settle, though, for a 35-yard field goal by Josh Brown with about a half minute left before halftime. It was up, it was good, and it was 20-10 to 10 as the Giants were now up by 10 points heading into halftime as the Jets would end up bringing the first half to a close. So they brought the first half to a close, and now the Giants would get the ball first in the second half, up by 10, but after nine plays on their first possession, they would end up punting the ball, although four and a half minutes came off the clock. 
So now the Jets would eat up some clock as well, about five and a half minutes, but they would end up punting after seven possessions. So now the Giants would take over on their own 29 with about five minutes left in the third. And they would go on a monstrous drive as they brought the third quarter to a close and they went deep into the fourth as this drive took almost 11 and a half minutes and they brought them all the way till under nine minutes left in this game all the way down to the four yard line with a fourth and two and instead of going for the field goal they ended up going for it and it was intercepted by miles is rontez miles with the interception of course Rivas not playing in this game but miles coming up huge with the interception course the Giants had a chance right there to get three points on the board to extend their lead but instead they go for it and then an interception turns the ball over and now the Jets had the ball on their own 14 and they would bring it right back the other way as they would march down the field into the Giants territory they end up with some big plays Brandon Marshall had a 25 yard reception on a second and 10 from the Giants 32 that brought down to the seven but their drive would stall on the six, and Randy Bullock would come out to attempt a 24-yard field goal. It was up. It was good, and it was now a seven-point game with less than four and a half minutes left with the score Giants 20, Jets 13. So now the Giants would be held to a three and out on their next possession as the Jets' defense came up big and forced them to punt, and now the Jets' offense would get the ball back with less than three minutes left in this game on their own 29. Fitzpatrick went to Powell. He picked up 20 yards on first down, bringing the ball up to midfield at the Jets' 49. And they would end up going to the two-minute warning. And coming out of the two-minute warning, they were faced with a third and nine at the 50. Fitzpatrick hit Marshall for a 10-yard reception. So the first down at the 40. But then Fitzpatrick was sacked by Ayers. And so he dropped him for a five-yard loss. But they would come right back as they actually were faced with a fourth and six. And Fitzpatrick... Runs it 15 yards for the first down. As it was now a first down at the Giants, 21. Fitzpatrick then went to Powell. He picked up 12 yards. Now it was a first and goal on the New York Giants' 9-yard line for the Jets. And Brian Fitzpatrick puts it up for Brandon Marshall. He comes down with it, a 9-yard touchdown. And with the extra point by Bullock, this game was tied at 20 apiece with less than half a minute left to play. So an amazing fourth quarter comeback for the Jets to erase a 10-point deficit with less than four and a half minutes left, scoring 10 points to tie this game. The Giants would get the ball, but the clock would expire with it in their own territory, and we were headed to overtime. So tied up at 20, going to overtime. The Jets would get the ball first. They had it on their own 26. They were faced with a third and nine from the 27. Fitzpatrick hit Herrick Decker for an 11-yard reception. That made it a first down at the Jets' 38. Fitzpatrick then hit Brandon March for a 13-yard reception to bring the ball to the New York 49 as they crossed midfield. Powell picked up six on the ground. And then Fitzpatrick went to Marshall. He picked up 10. Now it was a first down at the 33. They then faced with a third and two from the 25. Two plays later, Fitzpatrick went to Decker. He picked up 17 yards. And now it was a first down in the red zone at the New York Giants' eight-yard line. So a pair of incomplete passes brought up third and goal, and the delay of game pushed him back to the 13. And another incomplete pass would bring out Randy Bullock in the field goal unit to attempt a 31-yard field goal. It was up. It was good. And so now with the field goal, the Jets were up by three. So the Jets up by three, but the Giants still had a chance. So the Giants... Have a chance right here. A touchdown would win it. A field goal would keep the game going. And so they would start off with a nice return on the kickoff. Harris runs it back 43 yards all the way to the Giants 42. So already they were on the verge of field goal range. Eli Manning then went to Odell Beckham Jr. He picked up nine yards on the reception. He was having a pretty good game, although not a lot of catches. But he was coming up with some clutch catches. An incomplete pass would bring up third and one. And another incomplete pass and a delay a game penalty 
would push them back to the 46. So now they're faced with fourth and sixth. And Eli Manning goes to ODB, picks up 20 yards, and a first down in Jets territory at the 34. Then an incomplete pass and a four yard run would bring up third and six, and another incomplete pass. And so now on fourth down from the 30, out came Josh Brown to attempt a 48-yard field goal to tie this game and keep the overtime quarter going. And it was no good. Wide left, and the Jets win. So the Jets win in overtime. They erase a 10-point deficit in the closing minutes of the fourth quarter. They tie the game. They force overtime, and they win it. They come up big on the defensive side. And Brandon Marshall making some big catches as well. They got the job done. Powell also played a pretty good game. The Jets now 7-5 and five with the win, 3-3 three and three on the road. The Jets are now 3-3 three and three at home. They're now 5-7 and seven on the season. And with that, the Redskins are now in first place over the Giants. Of course, the Redskins play on Monday night against the Cowboys. But they're up on the Giants now as the Redskins take a hold of first place with the Giants' loss. And the Jets keep pace in the AFC with that wild card chase as they're looking to get into the wild card. Of course, the Patriots are at 10-1, and one, so they're three games back of the Patriots. Well, three and a half games back. The Patriots playing in the second, in the late games here going on. So the Jets coming away with a big win. Is, uh, it looked like they were going to lose this game, but instead their defense clutches down. They come up big, and praying and Marshall with that touchdown to tie the game, and then the field goal, Bullock coming up pretty clutch in this game as well. And Ryan Fitzpatrick not making any mistakes, and he almost threw for 400 yards, one of his best games. As Fitzpatrick was 36 for 50, 390 passing yards, Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Chris Ivory was the leading rusher in the game with 10 carries for 47 yards. He did have that fumble, though. And Fitzpatrick actually had five carries for 22 yards. Powell had six carries for just 17 yards, but he had eight catches for 91 yards and a touchdown. So he had 108 total yards on the game. But Brandon Marshall, 12 catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown. Eric Decker, 8 catches for 101 yards. Chris Ivory also had 5 catches for 22 yards to go along with his 47 rushing yards, which gave him 69 total yards in the game. Eli Manning, 18 for 34, 297 passing yards for the Giants, 1 touchdown, 1 interception. And their leading rusher was Darkwa with 8 carries for just 23 yards. They really couldn't get anything going on the ground. Of course, both teams struggling to run the ball in this game. It was really... End up turning into kind of a shootout. It was really an aerial battle. Odell Beckham Jr. had six catches for 149 yards in this game, including a touchdown. And Ty had three catches for 70 yards. When we look at the kickers in this game. Randy Bullock was perfect. Three for three on the field goals. Two for two on the extra points. And Josh Brown, two for three on the field goals. Of course, that missed field goal was the one in overtime that cost them the game. And then two for two on the extra points. And we look at the defense for the Jets. Williams had a sack. Wilkerson had a sack. And Cantampano had a sack as well. And Miles with the interception. A big interception down there on that fourth and two. And then for the Giants, Brinkley had a forced fumble. Ayers had two sacks in this game. And Jenkins had a sack as well. We look at the team stats in this game. The Jets, 28 first downs, just 14 first downs for the Giants. It's really, you know, they were kind of just having those big plays. Like you saw with, uh, you know, in case in point, that Odell Beckham 72-yard touchdown. You know, not a lot of first downs on that drive. <laughs> they just got into the end zone real quick on that one. But... We look at the third downs, 6 for 15 for the Jets, 40%. 4 for 15 for the Giants, just 26%. The Jets were 1 for 1 on fourth downs, 100%. The Giants 1 for 2, 50% on fourth downs. Total net yards in this game, 463 for the Jets, 355 for the Giants. 
And we look at the rushing yards, 90 for the Jets, 74 for the Giants. And through the air, net passing yards, 373 for the Jets, 281 for the Giants. As Fitzpatrick was sacked three times, losing 17 yards. Eli Manning was sacked three times, losing 16 yards. When we look at the penalties, both teams penalized eight times. 61 penalty yards for the Jets, 60 penalty yards for the Giants. Two fumbles for the Jets, but they lost one, recovered one. And then in the red zone, the Jets just one for four, 25%. But the Giants, 0 oh for three, 0% in their three red zone trips could not come away with a touchdown. And if you don't come away with a touchdown in the red zone, you're going to be hard-pressed to win a game. And we look at the time of possession, 38 minutes and 31 seconds for the Jets, 29 minutes, 56 seconds for the Giants. Of course, the extra time for overtime. But the Jets coming from behind. It looked like the Giants were in control when they went up by two scores. But the Jets just kept battling back. They were playing really good defense all game long as they were making it tough on the Giants. And they just continued to play steady, continued to play hard. And down the stretch, you know, they their defense put them in the position to be able to win this one as they came up big also on offense. And Fitzpatrick just kept throwing that rock around. And he did a good job of protecting the ball as he didn't turn it over. Of course, Brandon Marshall coming up really clutch with some big catches, 12 catches in the game. And all of them pretty much meant something as he kept moving the ball down the field and he had that touchdown they tied it up to send it into overtime there in the closing minute of the regulation. And then the Giants, you know, they they kind of rely on those home run plays. They rely on those big plays. And, yes, the big plays are fun to watch, and they score quick points that way, but they're not really consistently moving the ball up and down the field the way the Jets were. And the Giants end up losing this game, and the Jets stay in the hunt. Of course, now the Giants are going to have their work cut out for them, but that we, that <laughs> that wild east in the NFC is wide open still. It's just a half a game at the moment separates them from the Redskins. Of course, we'll see what happens on Monday night. The Redskins, if they win that one, they go up by a full game with four games left to play. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and having a great weekend and enjoying all the sports.